Well, welcome back. We're at the Trinity Lutheran Church in Mountain Lake, Minnesota. I'm here with Pastor Peter Kufall. My name is Terry Karshnick, and we're taking another good look at Luther's small catechism. Uh, we're up to page 237, if you got the book out. Yep. We're looking at, once again, what is the, be the benefit of the Lord's Supper? as we get to, into all of this about what the Lord's Supper is about and why Christians should partake of this sacred meal and why it is important. This is a special time, a special question we each need to examine ourselves on. Right. You know, it's something we shouldn't take lightly. No. So Terry, what does Luther say? What is the benefit of this eating and drinking? These words, given and shed for you in the forgiveness of sins, show us that the sacrament forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation are given us through these words. For where there is forgiveness of sins, there is also life and salvation. Pretty important stuff. Very interesting, yes. So, as we look at this gift, it's an amazing thing, you know. We are given forgiveness of sins, life, salvation. Sounds pretty good, right? Yeah, it does. Yeah. yeah. It also says here, what is the benefit offered in the sacrament? Yeah, well, that's a good question. Right. Now, Jesus says, do this in remembrance of me. Yes. So when Jesus says to do it, what should we do? You should do it. Right. You, what he said, that it's a command. Right. But sadly, some people avoid church and avoid the Lord's Supper at all costs. That is sad. Yeah. But it's a part of the, the battle against sin. Well, that's the devil. Yeah. That's just a part of it. He finds whatever he can to throw in the way of getting between us and God's gift of forgiveness. Right, right. That's sad. Right. Because it's a gift that Jesus commands us to partake of. And, well, we're sinners. We need it. Right. And so we should do it as often as possible. Well, not just once a year. But how, how, often is, how often do you feel it's necessary? When's the last time you sinned, Terry? That I sing? Sinned. Sinned. <laughs> wow, I come across that one. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> I got to say, probably on the way in here today. I mean, there's there's so many things. Oh well, yeah. Every day, every day, always. And so, when do we need God's forgiveness? <laughs> as often as you can get it. Yeah. So when should we? How often should we take communion? As often as you can. Whenever it's offered. Yeah. As often as you can. I get it. And so we need that gift because it gives us these wonderful benefits. The first of which, you know, is the forgiveness of sins, which Jesus won for us on the cross. Right. You know? Right. In Matthew 26, Jesus says, This is my, my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. You know? okay. That's the gift that it brings. You know? The other aspect of it, with the forgiveness, God gives all other blessings as well. Life and salvation. You know? When yeah. we know we've had that forgiveness of sins, something changes with us. We yeah. have a new outlook on life. Yeah. The Holy Spirit, we believe, does all that is truly good and God-pleasing in our life. We take, can't take credit for it. The no. Holy Spirit works through us to do those things. Yeah, that's that's exactly the way I see it. Yeah, well, that's because what the what Scripture happening. tells yep. us. Yep. You know? And so, if in Romans chapter 6, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with Him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead, He will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over Him. We have that new outlook on life. We have that new lease on life. And knowing that, are we going to try and do what is pleasing in his sight? I sure think so. Yeah. And so we're going to be encouraged to do what God wants us to do, to serve our neighbor. And so the barrier is taken down you know, once again. Mm. So we, we need that gift to, to live out that life here on this earth, to share that good news. I like that. Mm -hmm. that's, that's good. Yeah. He also, in this sacrament, Jesus gives victory over sin and death and strength for that new life. You know, we can remember when those temptations come our way to get back into sin, we should say, wait a minute. God gave his body and blood for me. I partake. I, he gave that to me. I, I received that on Sunday in church. This is not who I am anymore. And you should respect, respect that, right. Jesus' word. Yes. 
Exactly. Now, the other thing that happens in the Lord's Supper is that we're not alone up here. Right. You know, we often want to think it's just between me and God. Well, it is personal. It is personal. But you're not alone. But you are not alone. You're sitting there with people next to you. And we're all sinners. And we're all sinners. And sometimes we've sinned against the people who we are Possibly. kneeling at this railing with. And asking for forgiveness of those sins. Yeah. When we come up to this railing, right. you know, we want to leave these, those sins, what we have done, yeah. there at the foot of the cross, there at the railing. Because that's where Jesus took care of them all. We don't need to carry them back into our world, back into our relationships, back into our life. Well, at least we hope we don't. That's the idea. Yeah. Yeah. But the temptation is, and what the devil is going to continue to work on us, is that we bring that back. It's, he always does. Yeah. So, you know, if you're not willing to leave those sins there, that's, that's a big issue. You probably shouldn't come, to, shouldn't probably ask for forgiveness if you're not willing to live with what he wants or he, he says. Well, that's, that's getting to it. Yeah. And we're getting that into the next, in the next couple of videos because that's, that one takes a little bit of time yeah, to unpack. Yeah, that's pretty, un, un, yeah, very unbelieving, I guess. But as Christians take the sacrament together, we're also having the same common confession of who Jesus is and what he is doing through it. Right. And so we also need to recognize that we don't always see eye to eye with other denominations, even with one another, as to what's going to happen with all this gift. Yeah, that's you know? true. That, that all makes sense. And so because it's a public confession, really, of who we believe Jesus to be and what he's doing. You know? And that's why it is so personal. Right. Paul unpacks a lot of this in 1 Corinthians. Okay. For example, in chapter 10, he says, Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. That's an interesting way to word it. Yeah. Because we're all one. one. We're united. We're of one common one. understanding, one common belief. Okay. All right. Makes sense. Because later on, as he also declares in chapter 11, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. You're making that once again. You're making a common confession. With, with everyone. Yes. Right. And so oftentimes, sadly, especially as, as Missouri Synod Lutherans, we get beat up a lot because we don't let any, just anybody come up to the altar. That's, that is true. That is. But we don't always agree on what this is. That's always been kind of an oddity for me. I, you, you know, if they're willing to, uh, to come up for forgiveness, even though they aren't Trinity Lutheran, I mean, I, I, I've heard arguments about that, and I wonder sure. about it too. Should we or shouldn't we? You know. Mm -hmm. I understand what the book says, but it is still one of them things that you, you really want to say, well, wait, they're asking. They want forgiveness. Yeah. So there, therein lies the challenge. Right. Therein lies the challenge. And once again, it comes down to, well, let's start at the beginning. Do you believe that what you are eating is Jesus' true body and blood? Okay. And many will say, no, that's just bread and wine. Well, okay. I, I, I still think... A lot of them do believe that it is the body and, and, and the blood. You'd, you'd be surprised. Again, I, yeah, I don't, mm -hmm. I've not been around a lot of different de denominations, mm -hmm. but, but interestingly, I, I know what you're saying, um, but I think I've seen, they say we pretty much believe the same thing you do, but you're mm -hmm. saying we can't, we can't serve you. Mm -hmm. So I, there are some people out there that are a little bit frustrated with that right now. Oh, very much so. Um, and I have got a concern about it, but I always come back to what God said. Mm -hmm. You have to believe what, what God said. So um, this has been a challenge you know, well, for quite some time. It is a challenge time. on this side. And the other aspect of it is, is that although the individual may believe that, the church that they have united themselves to and put themselves under the shepherding of, 
declares something quite different. Yes, and, and we have discussed that through some of our meetings, in the elder meetings. So it's very interesting when you get involved with that. Um, yeah, it, it, it's, it gets to be messy. And, and when the rubber hits the road, so to speak, yeah. what is it that you believe? Really, yeah. What is and it? what is it that your church believes? It's a, it's a sticky it's, spot. I, it's I, a scary I, spot. I, st I still feel like, you know, if the person is willing to come up and ask for forgiveness, shouldn't you be served? But I also understand what God said, if this is what you believe, mm -hmm. and that's where it should be. And we're going to cover some of that. Okay. In other words, keep watching these videos, my friends. But once again, we're going to pause there as we continue to move into our next segment. Okay. And we'll dig a little bit deeper. But these are God's gifts for you. Learn about them. Ask yourself some of those tough questions. Talk with a pastor. Get in God's word. We'll see you soon. <laughs> 